Hi boys and girls, welcome back. You all enjoying Kingdom Kids? I'm sure you are. I know we're all enjoying doing it for you. Now we're talking about the throne. Who's on the throne today? The first day we talked about God being in the throne in heaven. The second week we talked about Pharaoh being on the throne. And today we're talking about... No, I'm not going to tell you it's just that easy. I'm going to give you three clues, okay? He is ready. The first one is he was tall. He was about a head above everybody else. The second clue, he was out looking for his father's donkeys that gone missing when he was chosen to be king. You got it, yet? The third clue, he was, he's ready, he was the first king of Israel. That's a good clue. You all get it? Okay, let's just close our eyes and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us back to Kingdom Kids. We ask that you just help us all to learn more about you, help us all to enjoy what we're doing, enjoy being and spending time with you. Open up our eyes and our ears and help us to learn and to listen to what has been said. And may we all come to know you better and accept you as Lord and Saviour. And it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Hello everyone. We're going to do a quick quiz and see what you remember from weeks one and two of Kingdom Kids. So here we go. Five questions. Question one. In his vision of the throne in heaven, which of these did John not see? A. 24 elders. B. A rainbow. C. A stormy sea. The answer is C. He didn't see a stormy sea. He saw a glassy, calm sea. Question two. What does the word holy mean in the Bible? Is it A, something with holes in it? B, something beautiful, good and perfect? Or C, something very, very old? The answer is B. Holy means something that's beautiful, good and perfect like God. Question three. How many plagues did God send on the Egyptians? Was it A, 12 plagues, B, 10 plagues, or C, 7 plagues? The right answer is B, 10 plagues. There were 10 plagues he sent on Egypt. Question four. Which one of these was not one of the plagues in Egypt. Which one was not one of the plagues in Egypt? A. Leprosy. B. Boils. C. Locusts. The answer is A. Leprosy was not one of the plagues in Egypt. And question five. What did Moses say to Pharaoh? Did Moses say, let my people Go, that's A. B, did he say, let my people pray? Or C, let my people rest? And the correct answer, of course, was A. Moses said to Pharaoh, God's message, let my people go. Hope you enjoyed the quiz and I hope you'll listen carefully to episode three because you never know, there may be more questions to come. God bless. See you soon. Well, hello everyone. Uh, say hello, Edgar. Yeah, he's uh, here again today, and um, hope you got all the answers right in the quiz. Um, he was very pleased because he did, didn't you? Yeah, he went around the house cheering and, and shouting when he got them all right. Yeah, so uh, well done if you got them all right. If you didn't get them all right, well done anyway for taking part, and uh, hopefully you're going to enjoy the story. So one more question. Uh, have you worked out who's on the throne this week? Tall man who was looking for donkeys and the first king of Israel. His name is Saul. 
and Saul, we're going to talk about King Saul. I've put Edgar in charge of filming this week. He's going to be looking after the camera, so you won't see him as much, maybe. Um, but um, I think you'll enjoy some of the things he decided to do filming. Yeah, he, uh, he decided he was going to have some fun with John, so look forward to that. Here's the story of how Saul became king. So we read about the story in 1 Samuel, the book in the Bible. And Israel didn't have a king. They followed God as their king. But they decided they wanted to be like the other nations all around, all the other countries, and they wanted a king. And so God allowed them to have a king, and he was chosen by God. And this is how God uh, chose him. He was out looking for his father's donkeys. His father had lost his donkeys, and he had sent uh, Saul out to search for them. And he was searching all around looking for his donkeys. And then God's prophet Samuel came to Saul and said, Saul, God has chosen you to be the king. And when God chooses you to be the king, he's going to put you on the throne of all Israel. You're going to rule over the whole land. And uh, to show that he's chosen you, he's going to give you a crown. But he's also going to anoint you. What's anointing? Well, when I explained to Edgar what anointing was about pouring oil over the head, he thought this was a great idea. And here he is, socially distancing and anointing King Saul. wasn't anointed with water, sure he wasn't. King Saul was anointed with oil. He was given his crown and he was put on the throne. Before he got to the throne, he decided that being a king was going to be something really difficult, something that he wasn't going to enjoy very much. So he, he ran off and hid. Samuel the prophet came and said, let me show you your new king. And they couldn't find him anywhere. They had to go hunting. And eventually they found him hiding among the baggage. They brought Saul out. Samuel said, here is the king God has chosen. Saul was put on the throne. He was big, and impressive, and the people were delighted that he had become their king. Here was Saul, this big tall man, running away and hiding among the bags. Um, Sometimes we feel scared. Um, we're going to sing a song together uh, called Be Bold, Be Strong. It's all about being uh, courageous and strong and trusting God. And uh, Saul could probably have done with listening to this song and singing us. It might have helped him. So join in, sing along and do the actions as well. Be bold, be strong. Why God chose Saul to be king? It wasn't because he was very courageous, because we see that that wasn't the case. He was afraid to be king. Wonder what it was. One of the things that we know about Saul was that he was very tall. He was a head taller than everybody else. 
maybe that was one of the reasons why people thought he would make a great king because he was big and strong and tall. But of course what mattered was what kind of king Saul was going to be. Was he going to be a king who led the people of Israel well? Would he listen to God and would he do what God said and would he lead the people of Israel who were God's people? And that's what they hoped for and that's what they wanted. That's what God said should happen. But very quickly we know that Saul started to make mistakes. He would listen to God and then he would do what he wanted. He would hear God say something and then Saul would go and do something else. Or he would do half a job. God would say you should do this and Saul would do something different. And so very quickly, God said to Saul, Saul, you're not going to be a good king. You're not doing what is right. You're not leading these people in my ways. You're not listening to my voice. And so Saul... I'm going to have to take you off the throne. Saul didn't want that to happen. When he became king, he wanted to stay king, and so he pleaded with God. God, you chose me to be king. You anointed me as king. But I have sinned. I have not followed Samuel's instructions. Please forgive me, for I was afraid. And let me come back to worship you. But God said to Saul, Saul, I'm going to choose someone else. In fact, I already have chosen someone else. Someone else who will become king. Someone who will listen to me. Someone who will lead my people the way they need to be led. And so Saul... Even though he was big and strong, even though he was the first king, even though he was chosen by God, ended up being not a very good king. Why? When he listened, he didn't do what God said. And that's always a dangerous thing to do. Because if we don't do what God says, it gets us into all kinds of trouble. If we would only learn from Saul and listen to God, and do what he says, our lives would be so much better. Saul failed as a king. He was chosen, he was anointed, but he never made a great king in Israel. So before we do some of our our crafts, we're going to finish up with another craft today for you to do. But before we do that, uh, let me show you some of the great pictures and uh, drawings, etc., that we've received in this week. So, as you can see on our board today, we've got some pictures, and um, we've been delighted when we've seen their pictures. We've got pictures on their thrones here uh, from this week. We've got uh, some of our, our great big uh, lumps from the throne the first week, and we've uh, got a great picture here sent in. So, really want to thank everybody. Uh, for sending all their their emails and their texts and their pictures and WhatsApps, everything. It's great to see you all taking part and please continue to do that this week and uh, let us know what you've been doing at home and enjoy. Just a wee tip that as you do this craft, watch the whole video through once and then maybe go back to the beginning and watch it and pause as you get to each step along the way. Okay, boys and girls, for the craft, you're going to need uh, some wool. You need five lollipop sticks, one of those cut in half. You need some markers. You need scissors, some sellotape, and one and a half inner tubes of toilet rolls. Okay. Boys and girls, for our craft today, I hope you've got all the bits together for it. We're going to make something that's part of the story that we heard about Saul. Do you remember what Saul was doing? Whenever the people and God were looking to appoint him king, he was looking for something. That's a clue as to what we're going to make. And God is very good at finding things, isn't he? So I wonder if you can find out what we are making today. So first, we need to take our toilet roll tubes and we need to cut them 
in uh, six different places for the big one. You see on the top or on the bottom, we have two sets of uh, places to cut about a centimetre each in from the end of it. And then if we rotate this round, you see that on the top opposite, we have two more cuts. Now you need to ask mum or dad or a, a grandparent to help you with that. Uh, so use some scissors or uh, a skewer. Then on the smaller piece, we make one cut on the bottom near the end, about a centimetre in again. And on the top, we make two little cuts in so that we can pop these little flaps up. So you see how they're cut? There with a little bit of an angle. Yeah, and then we stick them up in the air. The next thing we want to do is take those inner tubes and we want to colour them in like I've done already. And so we have the big one all coloured in. See what I've put on it? I've got a cross on it now. What we're making has a cross on its back. Maybe that's a clue for you. And then on this one, I've put, I've put up the ears, yes, and we've got eyes drawn on it as well. So maybe you could draw on your eyes too. So next we want to cut some wool. And so we need to wrap it around our hands or something like that. Cut it about the same length as one of your uh, one of your lolly sticks. And then you get a little pile all about this long for the head. And then we get a little bit of sellotape and we stick we sellotape it into the centre. So there we go. A bit of sellotape. You see what it is? It's a head, isn't it? wonder what we're making. Next, boys and girls, we're going to use our lollipop sticks and we're going to stick the short ends into the top. So we have one pointing in that way and one we want to push further down in at the other end. So it's just peeping out. And now on the other side, we take our four big ones and we pop them in to each of the spaces. So now we have a body with a neck and a little stub at the back. We better put the head on, haven't we? So let's put the head on. Oh, we'll fix the hair. And we'll put the head on by popping it through the other hole on the neck. There we go. Do you see what it is now? It's a donkey, but we're missing one more thing, and that's a tail. So we're going to take another colour of wool, and this time cut a lot of pieces about twice the length of a lollipop stick. Once you've done that, you want to loop around your finger, and then sellotape off at the top. Now what we do is, we squeeze it on to the end tail bit. And hey presto, we've got our donkey, like the donkeys that Saul was looking for. We look forward to seeing all your donkey creations uh, in photographs. Uh, please text them to any of the ministers or post them onto the Facebook pages of any of the churches. All right, have fun.